All right, welcome to the official. Today has been a whirlwind day. We are recording on Wednesday at the close of early signing day. We're going to do a quick wrap up for you as we do our last show of the year. We will then take a break next week uh, for kind of the holidays and we'll be back in 2023, probably talking mostly at that point about uh, some 2023, but but starting to flip the page to 2024. But today's been a, an amazing day. The Campus to Canton live stream uh, was, a, was an awesome time with, with many guests. We had Avery Johnson on, and it was, a, it was a really good day talking about these recruits as they finally made it official and signed their LOI. But tonight we're going to give you a recap, and this will air Thursday morning, so you will get all the high points of what happened in early signing day 2022 and this is the official. All right, guys, welcome in. I know everybody's a little bit tired. Uh, it's, it was a long day, a good day, though, talking about all these signings, a couple of flips for early signing day 2022. So stick with us for another eh, 20 minutes or so. We're going to give you the highlights for the day that was early signing day 2022. Matt, welcome in. David, welcome in. And also thank you for your, you know, your assistance with the show today. I think it went really, really well. Yeah, definitely. It was uh, it was quite a show, long long yeah, hours six, there. Almost ten hours straight of coverage. Uh, I know yeah. that you guys both had multiple shifts. You were in there talking about these players. Before we get started, you know, like and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy what you're hearing. If you like what we're doing with the official, um, in terms of the recruiting side of things, and also check out Campus to Canton for a more broad range of things that we do. Uh, anything that you enjoy on the college side, whether it's fantasy, recruiting, uh, some gaming stuff, wagers, we do it all. And we want to get you guys the best content each and every day of the year. Um, we have multiple subscription, uh, you know, tiers for whatever, you know, fits your needs. So check out campus to without further ado, let's get into what happened today. Early signing day, 2023. Uh, we'll start with the – there were two teams, I think, from a fantasy angle that pretty clearly had, um, you know, the group of three guys that we looked at as a team and said, the, this is the three studs uh, of any given class. And that was Texas and USC, who both signed all three guys, no drama there at all. Let's start briefly with Texas, who got Manning, Baxter, and Jonte Cook – and uh, I'll throw it to you, Matt. You know, what, what is this trio going to do for, for your fantasy teams uh, as a trio of recruits? I mean, they're all three going to be freshman first-round picks, I would imagine, right? Uh, yeah, it's hard to imagine any draft where those three are not first-round picks. I mean, especially probably all three are first half of the first-round pick, I'd imagine. Um, you know, they're all just so talented in their own ways, um, you know, top – two players at each position for us. I mean, Baxter was our RB1. Cook is our mm -hmm. consensus uh, wide receiver two. And then Arch is our uh, that's a cure, uh, quarterback two. Sorry. Yeah. No, yeah, for sure. They're, those guys are going to be lighting it up. And we talked throughout the day today on the live stream about, you know, each one of those guys can win the, the you know, player of the year at their respective positions in the future. So you're talking about high, high, high in talent. Um, and then, David, USC got their three guys, which was led by a quarterback, of course, Malachi Nelson, and then two receivers who are in our top three, Zachariah Branch and Mekhi Lemon. Uh, again, do you think those are all three of those guys are going to be first-round you know, freshman picks? Yeah, they should be. I think all three yeah. of those guys are going to be on the field right away and contribute right away, and everyone's going to see their talent like immediately. It's going to be pretty crazy. Well, to be fair, Nelson probably not till twenty twenty four unless an injury happens to Caleb. Oh Williams, yeah, but, that was a dumb But statement. yeah, no, I, I agree. as soon as possible, as soon as possible, because I think yeah. Nelson Nelson walks in twenty twenty four, which is all you can expect, uh, and probably is the QB two. So an injury happens and he would show up uh, for them immediately in year one. Let's take it to a team that actually 
kind of fizzled. I know we were talking a little off air about Colorado. We thought going in, are you know, is Dion, is Coach Prime going to do something unprecedented like he did last year when he got Travis Hunter, who still is apparently going to transfer? We don't really know. He just got that, uh, I think, 1,000 or 100,000 subscribers on his YouTube page. Um, but Colorado, fairly quiet. They're, honestly, their biggest thing was Dylan Edwards, which was last week. Uh, and then they did add Adam Hopkins today. But maybe this is going to be a February thing where he'll sign some guys you don't expect in a few months. But it was a hard to expect too much out of two weeks here since he took the job. Were you all surprised at the lack of noise at, from Colorado or kind of expected? I, I wasn't very surprised. I mean, that's just kind of how it goes for pretty much you know every team with that got a new coach so, so late in the cycle. Like, you know, Dillingham isn't, you know, pulling in these massive recruits to Arizona State all of a sudden. He's you know, kind of just getting the guys that he can because, you know, he just didn't have time. He's only been there, you know, two weeks. There's only so much you can do in that amount of time to convince these guys that, hey, this is actually the right spot for you. So this place you've been talking to for, you know, a year or several. Yeah, the cycle has sped up so much where, I mean, guys, I think, are building relationships as sophomores and high school and many of them are committing uh you know late junior year um or even early junior year and then finally signing today but like yes like you said those relationships have been in place for so long it's really hard you know to do that in such a short period of time uh david louisville speaking of teams that actually did not keep their big trio intact louisville had a, a three uh you know a big three of pierce clarkson deandre moore and Ruben Owens, uh, Clarkson, kind of a QB 10. But the other two guys were like, you know, top seven at their position. I mean, Owens was consensus top one running back. And for us, I think he was two or three. Owens flipped to Texas A&M. And then DeAndre Moore did not sign today. Uh, what does that mean for Louisville? I mean, are we are we thinking that class is going to totally crumble? They did get Clarkson. Uh, I don't know if he signed, actually. Do you guys know if he actually? I don't know him? if he signed. I didn't see that he, he signed actually. Oh, he did. Okay. Matt, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he's in, which is good to get that quarterback in place. But um, and they flipped a, a running back, but you know it wasn't Ruben Owens. It was a three-star guy who I kind of like, Keywan Brown, but not a you know not a guy of Owens' caliber. So, you know, David, what do you think? Jeff Brom, kind of a loser today in terms of Louisville. Um, not getting the guys they had committed for quite a while. Yeah, I think they're definitely losers. I thought Rob might actually retain those guys just because he has a pretty prolific offense. Like, I feel like he'd want to be involved in that. But like we just were, were saying about Dion, like he he's already, I mean, he doesn't have established relationships probably with these guys and they're going to look elsewhere. NIL gets involved. Things get weird. Obviously, A&M has a ton of money and, uh, you know, DeAndre Moore is apparently getting enticed by Texas, which is, you know, it's hard to pass on them too with what they got going on with Arch and everything. Yeah, it is. That is true. Um, yeah, so we'll see. I mean, I think we like the Brom offense for fantasy. I think we like playing in the ACC, honestly, for fantasy. That's kind of a, a wide open conference, but uh, the, the players were not as premium as we thought. I mean, Louisville, I think, was in our top 10 at one point and obviously has fallen off. Oregon, of course, the, the, the story of the day was what Oregon did. Um, Dan Lanning, incredible job. But on both sides of the ball, on the fantasy relevant side, they flipped Novasad, who's a, you know, a top 20 QB for us. Uh, swipped, uh, flipped Jaden Lamar from, from Notre Dame, who I kind of like, but I think I'm, I'm, the, uh, I'm the rogue guy who kind of likes Lamar. Um, and then Jurian Dickey has said all the right things. He, he Instagrammed that he was going to make an announcement, and the announcement was a bunch of pictures of him in Oregon gear. I think you guys had some intel that said he was going to wait until like his brother or something who's transferring in was going to sign. They wanted to sign together, so maybe that's the delay. But it seems like he's all systems go for Oregon. And if, uh, you know, if, he, if he lines up, we got a great class here, top 10 for us, top 10 in real life, the whole thing. And then we've got, um, I think now is a good time to just show these top 10 classes we've talked about, right? So starting with number 10, any of these are surprising to you guys? Tennessee with a with a late addition of uh, Bishop, the running back, 
got into the top 10 and actually knocked out Louisville, who was sitting at the 10 spot. Texas, who um, just doesn't have the volume of some of these other teams, but also um, is looking pretty good with um, three, seven, six. They should be higher, actually. Or no, something's wrong. I think Oregon needs to be updated. They actually, they actually should have more than three point five two. But uh, Miami, Oregon, Oklahoma. So anyone in this uh, six to ten range that's surprising to you? I guess Miami. I, I who do they have? I don't even remember. My brain is so fried right now. Like. Miami that is has. true. That is true. Um, Miami's been doing it on volume, basically. Miami um, has six players, and they're all honestly, they're all right at like 0.65. So no, no guys who are like most of these other teams at least have someone who's at like you know a 75 or something like that. But Miami's got nobody really that special. Um, they just have a bunch of players. And by the way, Oregon. That didn't get updated, I suppose. So they have a total now of 4.1, and they should be, they are correctly in the seventh place, but their total is 4.1 with six commits and a 0.68 average. So uh, that just uh, was um, a little transcribing error there. But Oregon really is in seventh place with the addition of Limar and Novasad this morning, and Dickey, hopefully, signing should keep them there. But I think Miami's doing it on volume. You know, six skill position players is kind of a lot. And um, a lot of our rankings actually kind of – we may have to tweak this next year because they kind of just – if you have a lot of skill position commits, you're going to be ranked pretty high. I think it's important to look at the average here where Texas is sitting at 0.75. I think that's tied for the most out of the top 10. And we know they have two st- or three studs that we already talked about. So we have the top uh, one through five here, Ohio State coming in. Um, USC with another 0.75 average. That's very impressive with six commits at 0.75 each. For us, that's Malachi Nelson, Branch, of course, and uh, Lemon, you know, carrying the torches there. LSU got into second place. Are you a little surprised about that? We They added Pimpton, and that jumped them all the way into second place for us with eight skill position commits. Um and Pimpton jumping them into second place, um, three SEC teams in the top three. That's, that's I guess, how it should be pretty much. Yeah, they have and a then three. I don't think anyone – go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, they have a solid class. I, I like it. When I looked at Miami's, it, it wasn't – it's like Mark Flesher, Chris, Christopher Johnson. I like Nathaniel Joseph, uh, Riley Williams. Those guys are okay. But um, LSU did a pretty good – Brian Kelly did a good job, I feel like, with uh, keeping some guys home, you know, like Sheldon Sampson, you know, was a, a definitely yep. good one. Caleb Jackson, uh, Trey Holly, these are all, like, solid players. Ricky Collins. Um, and like Yeah, Collins, I mean, keeping a lot of these Louisiana guys at home is really, really important. That's where you start recruiting is, is in your backyard. Right. And your guy, Camorian Pimpton. He's out of Texas, though, I believe, so just adjacent to Louisiana, but a nice addition and bumps them up to uh, to second place for us. And Alabama, of course, is going to Alabama. They did it on volume, but a nice average of 0.7 per player is certainly nothing to sneeze at. Um, but, uh, you know, with two pretty highly rated running backs, two quarterbacks, their receivers, they got Malik Benson, which we like. I mean, it was a pretty big class for the Tide and then finally, not on this list, but the Gators, the Gators got Rashada in the end. I think uh, as the day wore on, that was a little bit questionable. And we don't actually have Rashada ranked that high, but he's a, you know, he's our, our QB 20 or so, um, which might be a little bit low. He, he might deserve to get some kind of a bump there. But, um, you know, just being included in the class was big for, I think, the Gators down in Gainesville. So we have some commits that did not sign. Lenora Sellers is a C2C, you know, kind of darling. We really like this guy out of South Carolina. He's been committed to Syracuse for a long time. Syracuse has now changed offensive coordinators, and it seems like he is definitely going to sign somewhere else. I mean, he's been getting offers from Liberty, South Carolina. Um, I think there was another team that a recent offer for Sellers. Where do you think he goes? And he didn't sign today, so he's obviously mulling his decision. 
And for C2C, I think this is a pretty relevant destination wherever he winds up. I think unless something, you know, unexpected happens, it seems that uh, he'll more than likely be signing with South Carolina. Now tell us about his charting, David. I know you came away kind of impressed. Yeah, he uh, – I got three games under my belt with him, which uh, ended up being like 103 plays. He is a really good runner. Really – I think he is the most physical for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's like 6'3", 215. Um, he has one of the strongest arms. I think his VOE was like third best in the class. Um, you know, he's hitting dudes like 60 yards downfield. It's, it's pretty crazy. Uh, the only thing is it's just a lot of one read stuff. Like he, he's not reading a defense. It's like every, almost everything is one read. Uh, you know, so there's gonna be a learning curve, but, uh, like I was telling Matt, like he holds like a 4.9 GPA. I, you know, I don't know. He's probably smart or he works really hard. He's doing something right. So I feel like he can learn how to read a defense at least, you know, it can't be too hard. It's just going it, to, there's just going to be a learning curve when it comes to college. But um, as, from a physical standpoint, he has NFL upside to me. That's why I put him in tier two. That's huge. NFL upside this stage is huge. If you can hit on that uh, in your C2C leagues, especially. So we talked about DeAndre Moore a little bit. How about Jeremiah Cobb? This was a guy we kind of liked, and then we kind of backed off a little bit. And he's a little bit small, I think. He's you know under 190, I believe, on on, on three. A lean to Auburn, very fast. I think we kind of like him. He's an intriguing player, honestly, but not signing today. That's interesting. I thought he was locked in with Auburn. Anybody know anything on that front, or we're just still waiting for that LOI? Yeah, I haven't seen. I all I saw was you know an Auburn reporter saying that uh, he's likely not going to sign until February. There wasn't really any reasons why. But, so to me, that's always just a suspicious. They're not happy with where they're turned off. Yeah, so. yeah. Usually it's a bad sign. I mean, I guess I would say in the event of a coaching change, maybe he just wants to kind of get to know Freeze better and make sure it's still a good fit. Uh, but usually I think that's that's bad uh, a bad omen for him winding up at the team he was committed to. Um, I guess we'll see. But I kind of, you know, we've always said Auburn, we weren't loving that landing spot. Maybe he goes to somewhere different and we, it changes our opinion of Jeremiah Cobb. But I think he's a guy that could rise or fall depending on where he winds up signing. So that'll be one we are going to keep an eye on. And then I know that David likes Tayshawn Lyons who apparently is not signing today at all, or we're still just waiting. Did you get any intel on that, David? Yeah, he hasn't signed yet. He's like the one guy where I think he could be uh, the guy that Dion flips eventually. Like you said, Dion might need a couple more months here before, you know, the mm. February official signing day. Maybe he's one of those guys that they can kind of, they can kind of flip here because he was, uh, he was offered recently and everyone and Lions recently committed. And there's no, I don't understand why he didn't sign like you would think that is would. weird. Yeah. The late commit, the late flip and still not signing is, is very strange. Usually when they f- commit late like that, they're just all in. So that's yeah, weird. I, I saw yeah. a Washington reporter um, say that uh, he wants to wait until February to sign and that Washington is trying to get him to sign now. So it's a usually that's bad. That's there. a bad sign. If, if they're yeah, trying not to great for Washington. You. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't know. Any of these guys, I suppose, could be getting phone calls from Prime. I mean, Jeremiah Cobb would be interesting to pair with uh, Dylan Edwards out there. I mean, I have no idea. I haven't heard that. That's completely just a what if. I don't know. But, I mean, maybe he's calling around to these guys who weren't totally solid and trying to add some three- and four-star guys uh, in February. I think we could see an interesting Colorado February signing day. I do think this was maybe a tall order for the early signing day. And so, I mean, honestly, unless you guys uh, have anything else to throw in there, that kind of, uh, you know, that that recaps the day for the most part. There weren't any tons of offensive shockers. There were some defensive flips, specifically for Oregon and some other teams. Most of the offensive guys were kind of locked in, and they kind of stayed that way. There wasn't – was there any surprises for you guys, like really big ones on the offensive side of the ball? Honestly, not really for me. I think just Nova said for me, just because – he had been pursued so aggressively by a lot of the big schools in the last couple of months. And it seemed like he was so loyal to Baylor and then to slip to, to flip to Oregon, like last minute, there was a lot of steam for that, like the last couple of days though. So it didn't like shock me today, but still kind of, 
surprise me. Yeah, I, I yeah, and that it's tough because, like you said, I mean, he he is pursued by Ohio State QB, you basically, um, and said no, I'm stuck to Baylor. I mean, that's just that's tough for the Baylor side of things. Uh, you know, they're gonna figure it out somehow, but. I think this is really in creating an interesting cycle now. And I, I this will be our parting shot here. Um, you know, what do you think the early signing day does for now what used to be called national signing day, but kind of a late signing day at this point? Do um, you think some of these three stars that have been getting more, more G5 offers, like the, the P5 teams that now see how the dust settles and say, oh, I need an added running back or whatever, start getting – are we going to start seeing some P5 offers coming in? And hopefully some of the guys that we've identified on the G5 side, you know, start getting some P5 offers and stuff like that. Is, is that how the cycle is going to go where like the, the upper crust does early? And you know, these G5 guys should probably wait to see if anything comes in between now and February. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, there's still a good amount of guys out there that are obviously not committed. There's more guys uncommitted than there are committed. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll see. I, I think there's a good chance we'll see a decent amount of new guys spring up. But I feel like for the most part, you know, pretty much everyone's been found already. It's just that you're going to see certain guys start getting, you know, increase in offers as more teams catch on. Yes, and I think that will be interesting for us, who we've already done, uh, you know, we've dived down, way down into three stars, unranked guys. We've already done sleeper episodes. And, uh, you know, it'll be fun to track for us if some of these identif- guys we've identified um, as thinking they should have some P5 offers, you know, get them and, and start. Like, you already hit on one, uh, Matt, with um, Haynes uh, for Clemson, who signed with Clemson today. And he hardly had any offers. And you were looking at him like, hey, this, this guy's legit. Um, and so it'll be that'll be very interesting to see how this unfolds in this window now between early and the national signing day. All right, guys. Well, uh, you know, kind of wanted to get in and get out. We did a lot of talking today and this is now just like the recap. These are the high points and uh, have yourselves a merry little Christmas. Enjoy the new year. I don't think we're going to be on again until 2023. Um, I think the Thursday, the next uh, episode will be Thursday the 5th of January. So that's how we're going to do it. We're going to take a little holiday break and it's been fun. It's been fun. 2022 was a great year and I look forward to a 2023. Absolutely. Yep. Happy holidays, everyone. All right, guys. Enjoy. We'll see you in two weeks. This has been the official.